Hey there, it's Tom Cheswick, professional photographer, digital retouch artist, and wannabe on one guru. Hey, today we have an exciting subject. It's color correcting images made easy. And uh, with this, we're going to learn to use color targets for accurate color and to save time. So possibly light meters, uh, targets like this, expo disc, perfect color. So if time is money, get ready to be a millionaire because today I'm going to show you how to speed up and improve your workflow. We're going to learn about two methods, setting color in camera using a custom white balance like this last image was done, or using color targets for speedy post-production color corrections using On One Photo Raw. And you got to make sure you're using the newest version of Photo Raw. That's 217.6. So make sure you see the wonderful image Blake Rudis captured. Um, because this use is Calvin temperature. So on the older versions, this method didn't actually work. Uh, so let's take a look about exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So in the older version of On One, even if I used Expo Disc, which corrects the color in camera, when I brought it into on one photo raw, I would have to make huge temperature adjustments just to get skin tones looking good. However, now that same image taken into developed, I did uh, make adjustments to the exposure, but the color correction is as shot and it is perfect color for this portrait session. So that part is amazing, and that's because of the new free update from On One. Okay, I just opened up a website, uh, B and H Photo. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple image, a couple products today that will greatly improve your color workflow. One is the Expo Disc. That's probably my favorite. The wonderful part about this is not only does it correct your color, it will actually set accurate exposure as well. So it leaves nothing in post-production. You're uh, starting with a perfectly exposed image. Next is the X-Ray Color Check Passport Photo. Uh, this is probably the priciest uh, target that we are going to be using today. The big advantage of this would be it actually has software to calibrate cameras. Now, On One doesn't take advantage of this, but Lightroom or Adobe Bridge does. Why would this be important? Well, let's say you're a wedding photographer and you have uh, another photographer shooting for you. You shoot Canon, they shoot Nikon. You can actually get it so those images are going to match up. I've even noticed this on some of my events where I'm using two different versions of Canon cameras and bridesmaids skin tones will look fine, but the bridesmaids dresses, the hues are often different based on the camera or on the lens. And because this has software to calibrate the camera, it makes all colors match up regardless of how you're shooting it does take a lot more time and effort, but it will save you time and effort in the long run uh, for post-production work. The next method that we are going to look at is uh, the spider cube. And this has some nice features, especially for post-production work. One thing I'm not testing out because I don't actually own, but if I was just starting out and I was like, hey, I don't know about this guy. I don't want to blow a lot of money on this color, color calibration. Start off with something like this because this is going to be simple, 
easy to use. You'll be able to use all the methods that I'm talking about today, and it's only $9.95 for a set of two. You can actually send me one of them, and I'll test it out for you to let you know how good of a product it is. All right, so let's hop back into On One Photo Raw. Okay, so we're going to start with color targets, and again, we use these when we take before we take an image of our subjects, and then we use that test image in post-production. So let's go here, and I'll show you how this works. Let's come down to develop. And basically, you just set this down where your subject's going to be, and you want it to look very similar to this. I'm going to turn on our highlights and shadow controls over exposures, um, because as you see, we don't have any on here. Um, if we come over to the next image, you'll see that same image, but now we have um, highlights and these will blink in your camera so it's very easy to see that you have overexposed your color checker so what you want to do is obviously um, if it's flash close down your aperture if it's uh, natural light you have a choice of speeding up your shutter or closing down your aperture um, and you want to adjust that until you get an image like this where we don't have any highlight or shadows and then in production you can take this and increase the exposure and as long as you don't get that you know you're pretty close to it so we may actually have to add close to half a stop of exposure to have a perfect exposure so let's see how that works in real time so before your subject's there, or once your subject gets there, you can just have them um, hold the card. And we just click on the eyedrop, and you want to pick one of the neutrals. So you can select one of these, or they have a specific one for portraits, and also for landscapes. So with portraits, it's going to warm up as you click along. I actually just like a neutral image. So I'm going to click there. And then if we look at our numbers, we should be very close at 215, 216, 218, very close. And we would get something very similar here. So we'll click it one more time just to see here. 214, 213, 216, close enough. Then you would take all of your images from that and sync. And with that, we have now perfect exposure skin. All we would need to do is to adjust the exposure if we need it, but our color correction is in. Next, we're going to look at the spider cube, and that works very similar. Uh, it has a couple different neat innovations. One is it has the highlight side and a shadow side, so it shows you that. Um, normally, your main color temperature is going to come for your highlight side, so you would correct using the gray side on your highlight side, but it's easy to see shadow and side. Next, underneath, there's a black circle, and that part is usually the safe part for you to lock up on your exposure. So if that part becomes dark blue um, with our highlight um, protection and shadow protection, that's okay. It also has a little chrome ball up top that also has a highlight, and you can see it's affected by that. But that part is okay. As long as we don't have overexposure on the white side, we're good. So this next image, if we took that and came into RAW, we would want to pull down our exposure to correct for um, the highlight side. So we're bringing our exposure down about a third. And if we use the light meter, we would get it correct in camera. We would know our exposure was F10 
and everything looks perfect just like that. With this type of color correction, you again use the eyedropper and you go to the highlight side and you click on the gray. You would then use that, um, that setting and you would sync it to the rest of your images and just hit sync and now you have color corrected images. The only thing that you will have to change will be exposures if those are off. Finally we're going to talk about the Expo Disc. This is the one I use probably the most. Um, but before we get into that I want to point out something very important. When you shoot in RAW the software is not actually assigning any color temperature to the file. So you have the entire color spectrum in that raw file. So the beauty of that is if you accidentally had this on a tungsten setting and we're out here in shade, we're going to make be able to make a perfect correction with no uh, degradation in the file. Now, if you shoot JPEGs, there's no problem with that as long as you get your color temperature as close to what the final output is going to be. So if you shot in tungsten setting for this type of outdoor shade shot, you would never be able to get a high quality um, image from that. You're going to lose a lot of uh, color definition in the file. So if you like to shoot JPEG and nothing wrong with that, just set your uh, temperature as close to what you're doing. So if you're indoors, no flash, set it to tungsten or fluorescent, whatever the lighting is. If you're using flash, set it to flash. If you're outdoors in shade, set it to shade. And you'll get close enough that when you use any of the methods that we talked about today, you're still going to get perfect color and perfect files after we make the adjustments. So here I mentioned with the Expo Disk, you actually can do it either as a target and then adjust that in post-production. But what makes the most sense is to use a custom white balance in your camera and then you get perfect color right into on one. There's no adjustments needed afterwards. So that for me is the quickest, fastest, time-saving, be a millionaire type of workflow. But we're going to go through a couple examples where I purposely did things wrong and you can see how it is. So for example here, let's go back into develop. So once you're in develop, you just want to highlight the last image from your session uh, from the location that you shot and then take your eyedropper tool, click on the image, look around, just confirm that it's pretty close, 119, 119, 122, close enough, then hit sync and all of your files are going to have great color, just like that. So for the Expo Disk, that's the two different methods. You either set a custom white balance in your camera and just have perfect color coming into on One Photo Raw, or use it just like we did with the Color Checker Passport photo or with the Spider Cube and use it as a target. Click on it and then apply the color to our settings. So I hope I made it easy to color correct your images using color targets for accurate colors and to save time. Be sure to give my YouTube channel a subscribe to it or give this video a like and you'll get more content. Hey, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Hey guys, I'm back for a quick recap. First, using color targets saves you time. Second, shoot a new target at each location or each change in lighting conditions. Third, very important, 
if you shoot JPEGs, do not use auto white balance. Auto white balance will give you a different color temperature for every shot. So if your senior has a red blouse on and then you shoot somebody with a blue shirt on, it's going to affect the color temperature between the two shots and then the color targets will no longer work. Four, be sure to visit Skittles the Macaw on Facebook. And then five, please like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and consider having me present one of my workshops, my hands-on workshops, for your local PPA affiliate or camera club. Thanks so much.